What's up everybody, Age of Empires tips here. What should you know about Age of Empires 1 coming from an Age of Empires 2 background? Age of Empires 1 and 2 have many similarities, but at the same time, there are just as many differences. So if you are an Age of Empires 2 player interested to get into Age of Empires 1, then this video is definitely for you. Also with the definitive edition coming out, I feel that this is especially relevant right now, as there will probably be quite some Age of Empires 2 players trying out this remake. So without further ado, let's look at the main differences between Age of Empires 1 and Age of Empires 2. So before I start, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with the very basic difference, differences between Age of Empires 1 and Age of Empires 2, such as the fact that you cannot walk under your town center in Age of Empires 1 and there are no sheep and all that kind of stuff. So let's start off with the first difference between these two games and that is the fact that you don't start off with a scout in Age of Empires 1, which means that you need to use your villagers to explore the map. And exploration in Age of Empires 1 really is key. Which immediately brings me to the second difference between Age of Empires 1 and Age of Empires 2 and that is the nature of the maps. In Age of Empires 2 most maps are pretty well defined and you will have um, approximately the same amount of sheep and you will have a berry near town center every game and you have one or two uh, boars that you can lure and therefore uh, in Age of Empires 2 there are pretty well defined build orders that that will work every game. In Age of Empires 1 this is not quite the case, of course you will have a patch of berries close to your town center and you will also have two stone mines and two gold mines but other than that you really have to explore your map very well to see what it has to offer to you and you will not get the same resources every game and that's why exploration really is key in Age of Empires 1 and it's also the reason why there are no well-defined build orders in Age of Empires 1 you really have to get a feeling for the map and see uh, what opportunities the map that you have gives you. Every map has certain opportunities that it gives you and you really have to adapt your strategy to the map that you have. But of course you have to explore your map before you know um, how you are going to play with the map that you have. Instead of build orders, there are some general guidelines in Age of Empires 1. For instance, if you're going for a fast bronze strategy, you shouldn't bronze uh, any later than 15 minutes into the game. In water maps, for instance, there are some guidelines for at what time you should make your docks. And if you're going for a tool rush, for instance, uh, generally you should go for 20 villagers and you should click the upgrade to the, to the tool age no later than 7 minutes into the game. But generally speaking, in Age of Empires 1, uh, there is no well-defined build order as in Age of Empires 2, and you really have to explore the map very well to find the optimal strategy for your map. The second difference between Age of Empires 1 and Age of Empires 2 is the fact that you are relatively defenseless early on in Age of Empires 1. In Age of Empires 2, you can make uh, walls from the first age. In Age of Empires uh, 1, you need to um, advance to the tool age and then upgrade or research small wall before you can make walls. And therefore, you are, you are really defenseless early on. And unlike Age of Empires 1, the town center is a defensive building in Age of Empires 2 as it can fire arrows at the enemy. As well as the town center can be used to um, hide your villagers inside it. Uh, and for this reason, uh, Feudal Age aggression in, the, in Age of Empires 2 is not always that, um, that effective. You can still do some serious damage by... Um, creating a lots of idle time on these villagers, killing some villagers. Um, but generally, the defensive options in Age of Empires 2 are much better for the defending player. And generally, the ultimate goal will be to reach the Castle Age, because it's pretty much impossible to finish uh, someone off in the Feudal Age. This is unlike Age of Empires 1, where tool rushing can be absolutely devastating, and you don't even need to advance to the Bronze Age to completely wipe someone of the map. This is of course caused by the, the, the um, lack of early defensive options and also it is uh, amplified by the fact that tool age units generally are more powerful in Age of Empires 1. For instance X-Men and Slingers can easily take down buildings and mass Slingers and Bowmen can still take down one or two cavalry or chariot archers. 
tool rushes are especially powerful if your opponent uh, is unprepared or doesn't know what to do and in that case he will probably resign very quickly so a tool rush can actually kill someone pretty easily if he's not prepared the third difference also applies to tool rushing a bit but it's the fact that buildings have far less hp in age of empires 1 for instance, a house in Age of Empires 2 has 900 HP, while in Age of Empires 1 a house has only 75 HP. So buildings are generally much easier to destroy. And uh, if you are rushing, uh, if you cannot find villagers, then usually it's a common practice to uh, start destroying houses, because that's that will um, really slow down the opponent. But also in general, uh, buildings are easier to destroy in Age of Empires 1. The fourth difference is the amount of town centers you should make. In Age of Empires 2, town centers are quite expensive and they cost wood and stone. Um, and also, castles are also pretty important and they cost stone, so you won't be able to build a lot of town centers, otherwise you cannot make enough castles. In Age of Empires 1, town centers only cost 200 wood. Uh, and also, uh, storage buildings cost 120 woods and that's not uh, a big difference so usually once you've built a government center that allows you to make additional town centers it's very common to just make uh, town centers instead of storage buildings so it's not uncommon in an age vampires one game to end up with 10 town centers or even more later on in the game the fifth difference is the fact that age vampires one doesn't have formations and this means that army micromanagement will sometimes be a bit different um, from Age of Empires 2. It can sometimes be a little bit more micromanagement intensive and you have to make use of grouping uh, in a smart way. The sixth difference that I would like to mention is the fact that Age of Empires 1 uh, is a little bit more micromanagement intensive than Age of Empires 2. For instance, it doesn't have a farm queue, it doesn't have waypoints and it doesn't have automatic resource gathering. Now, whether or not you think that this is a good thing will depend on your background. Most Age of Empires 1 players will say that the changes made to Age of Empires 2 removed some of the micromanagement skills um, from the game, while in turn a lot of Age of Empires 2 players will find it pretty annoying that they have to uh, assign every new villager to a task and can't automatize this but then again some of the age of empires 2 players don't really like age of empires 3 because it made things even simpler and they say that it removed skill from the game so in the end i think it just boils down to my game is better than your game argument so it's really not that interesting to talk about i would like to add though that this is not difficult at all and if you're a decent age of empires 2 players you should be able to get the hang of this pretty damn quickly and you will find out that it's not actually that bad Especially with the use of idle villager hotkeys and all that stuff. What I would like to mention though is that the definitive edition uh, will add some quality of life improvements to the game. And I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. And I really hope that this will get some Age of Empires 2 players to get into Age of Empires 1 and the definitive edition. But we'll see. Anyway, those are the 6 main differences between Age of Empires 1 and 2 that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, of course, there are countless other uh, differences um, that I didn't want to mention because they are rather obvious. If, however, um, I did some miss something important, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe so you won't miss any future videos uh, on how to get good at Age of Empires 1. Take it easy, guys.